you reach Let's Go Free Radio. And I've been working all week to bring you six great items that you can learn and take advantage of. These are little known sources of money and help that nobody knows about yet. We're just a very few and you'll be among the first. Listen, we're going to show you an inventor who has the safest earphones in the world when, when you go out and exercise. And he got over $12,000 of free internet money to make a business out of that. So you can do that. Or how about a stay at home mom who delivers a baby at the same time she's raising like $25,000 on the internet for a business idea. Now that's a real mom, isn't it? Or how about learn why it's important for you to know about Americans biggest source of free money. That's right. I'm going to tell you why I did an interview on this and we're showing you that. Or how you can help every nonprofit in your neighborhood become successful. And you could do it for little or no money. Wouldn't you love to help all the nonprofits in your area? Well, you can do that and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, how about the secrets? of getting around all the problems with Obamacare. You've been reading about the problems? Okay, I'll show you a way to get around those problems, okay? Or how about learning about the $300 billion that's coming for small business and little investors. $300 billion! Watch all these! I worked hard putting them together. You know, I run almost every day. <laughs> and I only do that because <laughs> for weight control. Man, there's a fat kid trying to get out again. I was a short and fat kid in life. So uh, when I start running every day, it really helps. But when I'm out there running, what I'm also doing is a twofer. What I do when I run, I'm listening on my iPhone to Mandarin vocabulary. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great. Running is so boring, you know, and studying a language is so boring, so I do a twofer. <laughs> it makes it a little easier to do both. But when I'm out there running with my ear, earphones, ear, earbuds in, you know, I don't hear these bicyclists are coming by, you know, and they're saying, on your left, on your left, and I don't even know, and then all of a sudden they're by me, and they scare the heck out of me. Well, this next guy you're gonna meet saw that problem. He made earbuds that you could put on your bike helmet or a ball cap or anything that don't go inside your ear and you can hear everything else in addition to the music or the <laughs> Mandarin words that you're listening to when you're exercising. It's a great idea. He's a cyclist enthusiast, you know, and so he actually has a design of a bike under his belt, you know, which is pretty cool. But he went on, you know, uh, one of the crowdfunding sites and raised twelve thousand dollars to get, you know, his, uh, you know, new earbuds, or they're not really buds, but his little speakers for the ears produced, and they're terrific. And what's so neat about these crowdfunding sites too? If you buy them now, they're like, you know, thirty, forty, fifty percent off than when you wait for a month or two after they raise the money. And if they don't raise all the money, you get your money back anyway. So it's a great shopping place. You get real good bargains. But these are cool, man. You know, if you're a bicyclist or a jogger or go out walking and you want to hear the birds too, in addition to your music or whatever else you're listening to, they're great earphones. <laughs> and you should do it. And also, it's a great deal. But watch him. He's a cool guy and how he design these things because you have ideas too in your head that you could design so watch him well lou tortola <laughs> and the audio plugs man this is terrific i mean I, I you know the most important thing to me is that you can now listen to music and it not be run over by a car because you can't hear anything else when you're on the road, right? <laughs> Very excited. These these uh, units work. Yeah, they're just terrific. So it's something like for mostly cyclists, but anybody outdoors doing exercise or whatever, it's a fun little product to have because you just plug in your, you know, their earphones, right, for this. That, that right. go above your ear. Let's show you. You have a set there. You could show us. Well, yeah, actually, this is a typical bike helmet, and uh -huh. the units are simple uh, speakers that are designed specifically for this use and I've uh, designed the core to be a certain length and a certain uh -huh. makeup so that it works and to put them uh, on a helmet it's pretty straightforward you just bring the uh, the uh, your uh, plug. media <laughs> plug that you would usually go into phone through a helmet and just bring it through and then um, the uh, the wire is ready to go on to the to your back pocket and then Simply, the uh, the speakers here would just go through one of the vent holes so right. that the wires are accounted for and and uh, well uh, protected, and 
And then they just pluck on or snap on to your helmet that uh, way. So it's like that side. super Velcro stuff or something you got, right? Yeah, let me tell you about that. It's a 3M dual lock fastening material as I complete uh, placing the second speaker on. Ah. And there you go. And then uh, ah, so, so this, so just snap this it on. Um, I have a piece of it here. And, uh -huh. and the, the coins a size, dime size shape that will be provided with the product is going to be around right. dime size. Uh, but as you can see, the... The material yeah, hold on, on the camera here. Can you see? There are snaps. a whole bunch of little yeah. mushrooms that are the same on both. And then when they go together, they they snap, and you could hear an audio, wow. an audio, uh, an audible snap. Yeah. So that it's a whole different material than Velcro, five times stronger. Wow. It's what I've chosen with it. And so when the speakers are on, and then your helmet is on your head, and I'll do that here yeah. to, to show you how it would work. Of course, you can see that I now. See. I do have these right. little speakers here. And I'm going to take the liberty, if you don't mind, yeah. of actually plugging them in. Oh, you're going to listen to us there, huh? And right, and then by uh, providing audio here, I should be able to hear you on my speakers. So you did something on here. Was is there a control on the wire too? Right. So the, the wire is a, a, a length that's been specified to be uh -huh. comfortable for this type of setup, and right falling on your right. chest about here you can then reach and control the audio. So now I, I have see. you in the speakers, and I can hear you perfectly. Right. And the the uh, end of it would go on the back of a phone and right. into your cycling jersey right. or, or, or jean <laughs> pocket, what have you. So, but more importantly, it's away from the ear, so it's not blocking your ear canal, and you can't hear the, 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 the faster bicycle behind you saying, on your left! <laughs> I've ridden with these for... Um, about a hundred miles on different rides wow. through, well, uh -huh. five or six rides, many rides on my own just to, to get comfortable yeah. with them. And then I went out and, and rode with my group and serious riders who are very particular about right. ensuring that people they ride with can hear instructions. What people look for when they ride with you is to know that your ear canal is, is open. Uh -huh. and, and if they're going to whisper instructions or say on your left or, right. or yell at you on your left, they know that you could hear them. And of course, not having anything in the path of your ear canal with earbuds with these speakers, you could hear every little noise on your neighbor's cycle beside you with the chain noises, um, you know, the ambient sounds of birds chirping <laughs> in the distance. You don't and miss yet you've nature. Got this That's why everybody has over your head. That's plugs in their ears outside and they miss the world. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so so no, you're I'm very excited. These things are working both. and uh, people uh, like them. But it, more importantly, I mean, 20 bucks. <laughs> well, that was my goal, was to introduce the product in the marketplace that was uh -huh. simple and effective and plug and play so that uh, I have a number of Bluetooth products that I've used over the years. Uh, oh, yeah. Bluetooth is popular, but the thing that I find with Bluetooth is that you inevitably forget to charge that right extension to your cell phone right. or what have you and then when you go to use it it's exactly. just not usable and then you get out of using it and, and this shouldn't be like that it should yeah. be just simple and people understand headphones and how simple yeah. they are to plug and listen to oh, and so uh this is designed to be a replacement of that so they're not directly in the ear but yet introduce yeah. audio around uh, around uh, your head it, it, to me it, it's a safety issue i mean that's why i feel everybody walking around even you know, and that's the way they should be listening to whatever they should be listening to. Um, and you could put those on a ball cap. So you could be wearing a ball cap and not uh, exactly. uh, have stuff in your ears and miss the world. I, I mean, I'm hearing you now, yeah. uh, you know, and I could hear ambient noises in, right. in the rooms adjacent. It's it's perfect. I mean, I'm really... And you're no rookie to bicycle. I mean, that that sign, that uh, article behind you is your bike on the cover of that oh. bike magazine. Right? <laughs> right. Thank you for noticing. Um, <laughs> I'm the inventor of the round tail bike. One of the rewards on Kickstarter is uh, a round tail hybrid bike um, oh. as a way to... Now, when you say uh, round tail, is that... The, the, the structure of the frame uh, or what? Hold on. I think I have an, uh, a pamphlet here I'll show you. Yeah. So this is my round tail oh. bike. This particular bike was actually uh, built in Montana by an American master uh -huh. frame builder. And what it is, is is a bicycle that does away with the rear triangle but introduces uh, a circle oh. in the rear, one on each side of the wheel, of course. And um, I have a, a U.S. utility patent on this bike and uh, design patents worldwide. And it improves... Uh, the ride by introducing comfort so that the vertical compliance on the bike up and down here doesn't deliver direct impact into your back uh, by uh, a triangle that... Uh, wow. So another safety so I'm device. I'm very, very proud of this project. My and, uh, goodness. Uh, I mean, definitely it's on the path and heels of that uh, 
project that I also wanted to do something new with this item. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that's, I mean, the, the, the earphones sound like a safety device. The bicycle you have, that round frame, it sounds like a safety device. If you're going to save your back, <laughs> that's, that's a safer thing that you could have. And, yeah, no, it and, does that. Uh, and then the price. I mean, I just can't get over that for twenty dollars you have. So if people are looking for this, they go on Kickstarter or actually go to your website and you'll get the Kickstarter, right? Audio Plux. Audio Plux, uh, dot com. Audio Plux, P L U X dot com. And uh, even yeah. if it's after Kickstarter, you could still get it for, from there. And you may, you know, if things if the gods are with you, you may have this in time for Christmas if people want to order this for Christmas, right? Well, you know, the good thing about Kickstarter is that very quickly we realized that um, there was interest support and uh -huh. um, we fast tracked to production of these uh -huh. where I thought I, I would be delivering them uh, at the beginning of 2014, January, February. Uh, we have already engaged the factory and they have produced our specific molds uh -huh. to um, provide the footprint for the 3M product that it goes on the speaker because right. that product will be factory attached, right? And um, right now, my goal is to have these here for mid-December. I really would like to have them here for Christmas. And even the Kickstarter backers who were promised that they would have uh, these in January, February, right. I want to exceed those expectations and deliver yeah. them, say, by December the 15th. And I'm working very hard to do that, and I think we can do it. Oh, well, that'll be fun. At least you'll get it before the first of the year or whatever. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and it's a wonderful idea. Audioplux.com. And you're an old-time bicyclist. You've been doing this a long time. You were born in Italy, the, the home of r bicycle racing, right? That's why you're into Right. This. Well, I mean, our culture, the Italians, as you know, yeah. have contributed great deal of innovation yeah. to the to the bicycle and we have a lot of champions uh, that have done extremely well in the history of, of cycling and uh, on my bicycle frames I have a, a label that says uh, uh, Italian DNA oh, I which <laughs> uh, is my DNA that's in that bike and uh, art culture and I'm very proud of it it's, uh, it's something that uh, uh, that is all about innovation design, and you know how we are, us yeah. Italians. Oh, gotta I, I always thought about our Italy. Design. I mean, <laughs> your design has been way ahead of us, and maybe we're getting into it because we're getting more Italians over this side of the ocean to help us with that design. You know, like you. We're and, arriving and, in those uh, Fiat 500s. You may have seen those commercials yes. where they come out of the wall. Yeah, no, the, the wonderful stuff, and, and Audio Plux is a got a wonderful idea you know marrying this new technology and then uh, that everybody wants something in their ear too but n to not to lose the environment <laughs> and, and to be safe when you're listening to music or, or your you know uh, whatever you listen to uh, on your iphone or or uh, any phone it's not just for iphones right anything with yeah, a plug. Of course. yeah no, i i um I'm excited about these because they work. I mean, well, the nice thing about this particular speaker is it's uh -huh. a 30 millimeter uh, speaker. Here, I've, I've got actually a uh -huh. raw one here. That's that's uh -huh. one that I work with. So it's about the size, a little bit bigger than a quarter. Yeah. Uh, there have been other products that have tried to do a similar uh, setup, but they've used earbuds that are away uh -huh. from the ear, like sur uh, hovering near the ear, and those are eight millimeter speakers, about nice. the size of the what's on the end of a pencil. Yeah. They don't create enough audio yeah. to be able to hear uh, the music when they're not directly in the ear canal. This particular speaker is uh, such that it could be near the ear but not over the ear, and uh, you actually, in some occasions, have to lower the volume so that because, it isn't oh. too loud. <laughs> well, that's a nice yeah. problem to have. <laughs> yeah, and then other times, uh, the ambient sounds, wind, and other noises will yeah. be quite loud, and you can still hear the music still in the loud. background, but it's more important, as far as I'm concerned, that you hear that upcoming vehicle right. behind Absolutely. you. Uh, on your left, and, on your left. And, your, and that, that's, on our rides, that's all we hear is on your left, right. someone's <laughs> passing you, and if you uh, don't hear them, they get upset. I and, you just, know, you so it's audioplux.com? Go there, go yes. off, and actually, you have a beautiful video. I mean, if you're just going to look at that video and understand, you know, what's going on in cycling nowadays is enough. And only $20. I don't know how you did it, but wonderful. Thank you oh, so simple. much for doing all this for us, Lou. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in uh, uh, letting me tell you more about these things. It's fun. Thank you. <laughs> See, if
earphones that you could hear the music and hear the world too. <laughs> See, there's all kind of cool things coming out in life, you know, and, and you can be part of that too. Think of your idea, work through the idea, you know, and, and then go on, you can go on the internet and raise money for it. See, you, you need nothing more probably than an idea, you know, <laughs> and a video that you could make and go on one of these sites and start getting money. I mean, look, you got 12 grand. You know, and so he could go make these things and he already has a couple hundred customers. That's the important thing, you know, that when you're raising money like this, you're getting customers, you know, and so it's a twofer. You don't have to, you know, get the money, then get the customers. You're getting both in the same. That's why I think this is a kick-ass thing <laughs> that everybody's got to get tuned into and you should too. Hi, my name is Rose Spinelli, and I am here with Matthew Lesko, who is the uh, the founder of Government Money Club, and we're at the crowdfunding convention and roadmap slash boot camp. <laughs> Just make sure we have our bases covered. So I want to ask you, Matthew, uh -huh. what brings you here today? You. <laughs> She's the Our only clothes. person here with any color on. Everybody else is a stiff, <laughs> black clothed person. <laughs> and the only person was bright and colorful. But it's important. I mean, crowdfunding, I, I can't think of anything bigger and important in our society right now than crowdfunding. It allows the average person on the street to find money for their dream, whether it's, you know, to start a business or cure some disease or get rid of their debt or something something like that without having to go through some gatekeeper. Absolutely, yeah. that's such a big one. And that's the key. I mean, I, I've written books and many of them, uh, I used to go to New York and, and convince some editor how important this book is going to be. <laughs> and then they'd give me money and write it and then I'd write it and, and it would fail. Yeah, we got nine, nine out of ten books I wrote failed. Yeah. But here you go right to the market, right. to the crowd. Right. And if they think this is a good idea, they're going to give you money. Your tribe. Yes, your tribe. And so now you have money and customers, so you know it's going to work. <laughs> and if it doesn't, who cares? Because you didn't have to do anything. Right. And then plus, you don't have to hire some, you know, you're starting a business the same way. You know, you go to some fat cat with a cigar and get money from them to start your business. Then you have to hire his girlfriend, you know, <laughs> and all this. So you cut that out and go right to the crowd. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Now, is does this represent a switch in your future career? I mean, are you still working with government? Oh, yes. How to get government? Yes, I mean, uh, government is still very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody here, you know, in crowdfunding, I mean, everybody's starting a business. Everybody, I, I could show you how to get free health care. I could show you how to get money uh, from the government. But everything doesn't work for everybody. So it may be crowdfunding. It may be a grant from your state government. You know, it may be, you know, uh, getting, you know, finding a doctor got a grant to cure your disease. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it struck me when you told me what you did, uh, uh -huh. finding uh, government funds that people don't know about that just like you just said uh, crowdfunding is not for every endeavor right. and so you know there was I, I'm sure you'd know this better but you know there's a lot of people that um, the research okay so let me ask you a question uh -huh. now does does crowdfunding represent your next endeavor or are you still going to keep trying to find people government funds it's an additional app <laughs> I mean, it's another tool. I'm trying to show people tools that they could take advantage of to do things they really want to do in life right. or solve their problems. So if you have an invention or something like that, well, gosh, instead of you know going to some invention company and you know, or, or trying to get a half a million dollars from the government for your invention, man, you know, two things. You could go to a government office to help you with your invention and the legal parts and then go on crowdfunding to raise money to see if your invention really really will be sellable or not. And that's an interesting point because crowdfunding is not right for everybody. Right. So now you're offering people alternatives, yeah. right? So. Well, my, my, my objective in life is trying to get people to do things. I mean, I, I feel so spoiled in life that um, I wake up every day having fun. I, I just can't wait to get up. I enjoy it so much. I, I, I'm embarrassed <laughs> that I have so much fun in life Aww. and doing what I love to do. And if everyone could do that, it just would be wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so I have two more questions yes, for you. One, <laughs> what a great guy. So Matthew, can I borrow your suit sometime? Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> no, you don't have to give it to me now. We'll talk. We'll talk later. So that was the that was a sort of funny question. But the, the serious question is, how do people find you? Uh, lesko.com, L-E-S-K-O.com. But I, I got no magic. I mean, there's nobody. It, it, the, the magic is all in you, and and it, it's just believing that there is help out there. You will find it. Right. It, it is there. People want to help. It's a natural instinct in all our lives. You run into assholes and everything, and you just keep going. Right. I think you know you, what you didn't say is the word passion, but everything that you implied by your yeah. manner and the words was all about passion, which is what crowdfunding is all about. Well, it's what life is all about. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, there's two things in life: is is to share your love with someone else and and to share your talents with mm -hmm. the world. And you should do both of those things as hard as you possibly mm -hmm. can. Should you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Thank you for being in this world. Uh, we I need more it. people like you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> okay, some people may think that a stay-at-home mom doesn't do anything. <laughs> You're wrong, man. Not only do they raise children, they do everything. Now, here's a lady I want you to meet. Now, she's actually having a baby with one hand, or however you do, having a baby, and getting $25,000 on the internet using the other hand, all at the same time. Yeah, $25,000 for an idea she has on a, a creamer. She hated all these synthetic and, you know, milk and the creamers out there. So she would make her own cream and put them in little containers and they'd spill in her purse and everything. So she went out and had coffee. She'd have these creamers. So she said she was waiting around for somebody else to invent, you know, a, a better tasting and a better, you know, uh, uh, a better product for a creamer. And again, because she's, you know, pure vegan. And so she wants that kind of product. And so she did it herself. That's it. See, why wait for somebody else to invent something or produce something, you know, when you could do it yourself? And she didn't have a background in this. I mean, she was running like blood drives and things like this. And, and she was just getting so ticked off at the world, you know, and said, why isn't there a better creamer that I could take that, you know, suits my specifications and everything? Because she makes it with like nuts and coconut and all this kind of stuff. It's really terrific stuff, you know, but not, a, you know, sort of the normal processed food that we get that really isn't good for you even. But she did it. She did it herself. She found out about him and she sat there saying, hey, I could learn that. I could figure that out. She's raising two kids now and doing the same thing. I got $25,000 figuring that out. <laughs> See, it doesn't take a mental genius to do most things in life. Just think of all the idiots we all work for at one time or another, right? <laughs> See, it's just a matter of doing it and having passion to do it. See, she figured this out because she wanted to. We can, we can all do almost anything we want if we want to. Most of us don't want to do stuff because it's terrible. We don't not involved in it. I don't care, I don't care about that. And that's why we get tired at three o'clock in the afternoon and want to go home and do this. Man, you're doing something you really love, man. You don't get tired even. And you'll figure it out. You get smarter and smarter every day when you're working on something you really believe in. Yeah. And that's what she did. That's why she's an inspiration. She's a superheroine, <laughs> but she's also a mom. And she just had her child in the middle of raising $25,000. And when you, that money starts coming in on the internet, man, you gotta, you know, the, every second counts because you don't have much time and everything. So she did it all, you know, and, and that's what our country's made of. There's people like that, you know, and you could be, we could all be like that when we find our desire that we wanna soak our heart into and really make it happen. So watch how she did this. Well, Madeline and Chris Hayden, boy, and your nut pods. <laughs> Are you two peas in a pod or just two nuts in a pod? I don't know. <laughs> well, Madeline, what made you think of nut pods? What are they? Well, I've been waiting for someone else to think of this. Ah. Um, I, I've been using a non-dairy creamer, and I love my coffee and tea, and I just didn't want to continue to wait for someone else to come out with a a more healthy, a more natural version so of a non-dairy creamer. So you don't like all the crap that people put in their coffee or tea, right? <laughs> and nobody was giving you an alternative, so you went out and do it yourself? That's the American way. What are you doing that for? <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband thought I was crazy because I was pregnant at the time. Ah. And so, but I just told him, I said, you know, I really, I really want to do this, and I don't want to have regret because someone is going to ah. come out with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I can do this. I can figure it out and, and learn and go along the way. And it's been just a really fast-paced, 
the wonderful journey. <laughs> well, you say you could figure it out. I mean, you were saying before you you were managing blood drives or something like that. Yeah. It has nothing to do with <laughs> nut pods. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, you know, the food industry is actually a lot less intimidating than I thought no it would kidding. be. There's a lot of FDA oversight, so you, you have uh -huh. some pretty strong <laughs> uh, bumpers on the road of what you can and can't do. And we've been lucky to be surrounded by some really... Um, wow. nice advisors along the way. Well, I mean, to me, that's a real hero. I mean, somebody sees a problem, nobody else is, you know, fixing it. We like to blame the world or somebody else. Hey, why do you fix that? Or And you just said, heck, I'm going to do it myself, huh? And you did exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. terrific. And, and for money, you went on Kickstarter now and you're raising funds. <laughs> yeah. wow. Exactly. Right. It it's been wonderful. Kickstarter has been a great way for us to um, not only get research on our product feasibility, uh -huh. but also just to get that startup capital yeah. for us to take the next step for our business. So you didn't and have what to we go found to the too is it, It's amazing that how many strangers you get. You get the, the family and friends that you would expect to get, but yeah. then you'll get a donation of $500 from somebody in England that you'd look at and you just go, where in the world did that come from? And I mean, it's, that's just, it's an amazing uh, world we live in that Kickstarter and things like that allow you to do what and we're doing. And it's global. We have people saying, I wish you were here in Israel, a following in the UK and, you know, our Canadian friends want us up there too. And so it's like, I don't even know how they found us. Wow. <laughs> the so. power of the internet. And I, I guess it must, I would think, sitting in your shoes, it gives you a, a better sense of, optimism about the world, you know, that more people are in, interested in a good idea like yours. They are, and I think they also are coming back to wanting to support organic uh -huh. businesses, you know, rather than big businesses and be able to help other people, um, like-minded people, be able to get their product or services off the ground. So it's been wonderful for us. Right. We got, I mean, to go to a big food manufacturer, I mean, if they don't see gazillion dollars, they don't want to talk to you, right? Right. Yeah, that's right. That's and, right. You and gotta, you don't need you to start small. Yeah. So you could get started with a few hundred people. Right? Hmm? Exactly. And you're yeah, in I mean, business. We're actually, raising, we're actually raising, you know, quite a bit more money than, than most people. And most people will raise, you know, $5,000, right. $10,000 to get their businesses off the ground. I mean, we're, we're excited about raising 30, but I mean, you don't have to start there. You can start a lot smaller. Right, right. Well, the, to me, what it is also in reading the thing, I didn't know soy was so bad. Should I say this loud? I'm not sure. <laughs> you said your product doesn't even have soy in it. <laughs> no soy, and we don't even cheat for our vegan friends. There's no sodium caffeinate, and so wow. it's just... It's just as, as good as you can get in the shelf stable pod. So, wow. well, I mean, yeah, show up that pod again. This is what you get. And you could take it in your purse and you don't have to worry about it leaking or anything like that, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I had been packing my own creamer with my own little um, cold pack uh -huh. and you just get stuck. Yeah. Uh, like on it, you know, you're using between non dairy powder right. and, oh, that's or wrong. Yeah. Cream. And so, right. And so, I wanted a portable option that right. was still better for you than yeah. what we have on the market. Well, who knows what's in that powder stuff, man? I, I mean, it, 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 it's your right. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a fat kid inside waiting to get out at any second. <laughs> I, so I, I fight weight every day. I used to be 30 pounds heavier until I exercised every day. But, Ryan, it, it, it's that. Not I, and I believe it's you know I didn't grow up eating well at all. I mean it was all processed foods and all the junk and you know you become addicted to that stuff. I I, I think all that bad stuff is addictive. That's why they get you salt, sugar, you know, uh, refined flour, yeah. and you can't get that off the wagon. Good. Pardon me. <laughs> that tastes good, but you oh. know that's um, that's why I added coconut because uh, it adds a little bit of fat and uh, so it makes it a little bit closer to uh, you know to a half and half uh, flavor rather than just almond milk by itself well and how we, did you we, get i mean like this is made up of coconuts and and almonds and so i mean when you were doing this were you banging these things in your kitchen yourself <laughs> <laughs> well a lot of people make their own almond milk uh -huh. um but i but i'm a mom uh -huh. and i'm I a see. wife and so <laughs> i but i went via the store 
store bought route, you ah, know. I see. And, cool. And I love to cook. Yeah. And so I just started tinkering with different um, different flavors. Uh, I like variety, and so we just tried our different flavors of of original and and French vanilla and hazelnut, just to be able to mix it up. And so, um, and our family and friends love it. And we've we've even gotten a couple of our dairy friends to try. Right. See, they've been surprised. You know, yeah, the, I mean, converts. The thing is, it's not only is it healthy, but it really tastes good. Yeah, you yeah. know, it tastes like really people. I think are sometimes surprised. It's like, wow. You know, we're used to having like almond milk, which just tastes sort of thin in our coffee. Yeah. But this stuff really tastes good. Ah, wonderful. It's got a creamy, nice mouthfeel. And people are like, wow, this is just great stuff. So if you want to get some of this, you, you go to Nut Pods and you get in on the first batch before it's even, you know, produced, right? Before the Kickstarter <laughs> thing is over. And uh, and you get, you're sending out cartons of these things, right? I mean, you get like well, a... They're going to be in boxes. Yeah. They're going to be in boxes in these little pods. Right. And so that way you can just toss them in your bag and, and you're ready for the day. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you go to nutpods.com, right? And you get Madeline and Joff's <laughs> nut pods. And you never... <laughs> and you can start drinking healthy coffee instead of all this other nonsense That's you're right. putting in your That's stomach. Right. And who knows what? <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck on their venture. It looks like you're there and you're going to save the world and make us eat better. And you have two lovely <laughs> children now. You just had another child last week and you're still out right. cranking up that Kickstarter stuff, man. That's where it's at. Yeah. Exactly. We're, when you're passionate about something, it, it gives you a lot of energy. Absolutely. So you could have a baby with one hand and a Kickstarter thing yeah. with the other <laughs> hand. That's a super mom. Well, thank you yeah. so much, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. See, isn't that cool? You get all these friends, you know, that, that contribute to your money, uh, money to your idea, you know, for you to start a business. Plus, you get people from England and all over the world. You, hey, that's cool. We should have that. And they throw money at you. You know, that's what's so neat about these things, you know, uh, to go on the web now and, and raise money to do things in life, you know, <laughs> and it's there. You know, we can all do this. It just takes the perseverance. And that's what life is about. And that's why I think if you find something you really want to do, like she wants to find a creamer the world should have that and she did it so she gave her that gave her the perseverance to get over all those little nonsense hurdles that we all run into and every time we want to do anything so that's the key finding your passion what you really want to do then the hurdles are details Well, now I'm going to show you four ways to beat the Obamacare bottleneck. <laughs> you know, they're having troubles on the website with all the, you know, people trying to register and everything. But, you know, there's ways around all this. It varies by state. I mean, they're signing up tens of thousands of people already. And, and actually, I was hearing that uh, when... Um, uh, Massachusetts started they only did like a hundred people or something like that in the first couple weeks yeah so anyway here's ways around the bottleneck first call the 800 number if you can't get on a line or whatever every state has an 800 number you call so you go to local help dot healthcare dot gov okay local help dot healthcare dot gov you put in your zip code okay and then you'll get to the local exchange for you and then you just call them if you can't get on <laughs> remember phones we've used them a long time now okay and actually what they will do they could do it over the phone or uh help you right there i mean i was helping a, uh, my chinese teacher you know and they even got somebody to speak chinese for her you know, <laughs> on the phone to help her with the application okay the next thing you could do number two is depending on state whether you're in but like i know here in maryland they have local navigator offices you know these are walk-in places like a real store <laughs> you go in and you order your health care okay how do you find out where it is okay because we have three right in our county here so you go to localhelp.healthcare.gov again put in your zip code find your local exchange and that 800 number will give you you know where they are in your area okay <laughs> so you walk in you find out the times where they are and you get walked in so if you really want your health insurance now you're not going to wait any longer <laughs> that's another way to do it 
Okay, another way to do it is find out uh, what other organizations like that are in town to help you is call 211. 211 is a local hotline for nonprofit organization, government services. It's usually run by the United Way or someone like that that has operators all the time to help you. So, hey, I'm trying to sign up for Obamacare, can't get online. What do we got in the area here? And they could help you. Okay, now another way is wait. Man, they're going to fix this thing. <laughs> they have to. It's the law. You know, and people are fighting it and trying to make all kinds of stuff out of this. But it's going to happen. You know, and, and actually, it doesn't. you can't get coverage till January 1 anyway. So that's months away. So you wait another week or so. What the heck? You know, what did you do for the last 10 years before you got cheap health insurance? Yeah, <laughs> you paid for it. So you wait till January. And you still have till March 31st to sign up of next year, March 31st, that's a long time. And they're probably gonna extend it because of all the screw ups, you know, they're having with uh, uh, online stuff. You know, and, and waiting, you know, I mean, it, it is, this is gonna happen. I mean, I was just reading the paper today where the big health insurance companies, okay, these are the people who are gonna benefit the most from Obamacare, not you and I, because we're getting cheaper uh, health insurance or whatever, and, and the insurance companies can't mess us over anymore on pre-existing conditions and stuff like that. But see, the government is gonna give you and me money to go to the insurance companies to buy it. So they're getting the biggest bonanza of all out of this thing, <laughs> the health insurance companies. And actually, it, show, it proves this here. In the last 12 months, in the anticipation of Obamacare, their stock prices for the health insurance companies went up 32%. So, see, now they're, <laughs> they're expecting, and they're gonna make a lot of money on this stuff because the government's gonna give us money to buy their product. Man, I wish I was in a business like that. <laughs> Somebody give you money <laughs> to buy my product. Now, wouldn't that be neat? Now, here's some quotes, too, from uh, um, executives of health insurance companies. This is the head of Aetna. His name is Mark uh, Bertol Bertolini. <laughs> okay, he said, we continue to believe that public health exchanges can represent a long-term upside opportunity. So they're looking to make money out of this stuff. See, and also the guy who is ahead of uh, Cigna Health Insurance, he said he expects a 10, 13% increase in their earnings per share over the next three to five years. And it seems, uh, you know, a given in America, when the rich folks are making money out of something, man, it's hard as heck to change it. So <laughs> this is the game that's gonna be around for a while. So you might as well use it because it's good for you too. Okay, I'm gonna introduce you to another superhero. <laughs> it's not me, it's a fellow I just interviewed. You know, he's a great guy down in Tampa, Florida. And let me tell you what he did. Okay, he's active in some charities and uh, in the Tampa area, and they're you know having difficulty raising money in this economy now. You know to solve problems. So what he did, he saw this crowdfunding idea. You know where people get money on the internet, free money to do things and to solve problems or whatever, or start businesses. And he just started his own website called crowd2fund.com. And it's just a blog. I mean, all he just, you know, he's not a big techie guy or anything like this. And, and he found a little app on, the, I think it's WordPress or whatever, the one of the blogs that he did, he used for it. And he set up a crowdfunding site and now he's raising money for problems in the area. In other words, this is a new way for anybody like you or anybody to set up actually your own crowdfunding site <laughs> to raise money to solve problems. Like he's, one of the problems he's working on now is a crisis center for teenagers that go through some kind of trauma and, and for young kids, whether it's teenagers or younger, I don't mean only teenagers. And they, you know, and so it affects their life. They see a death, they're involved in, you know, uh, an abusive home or something like that. And so their lives are really in big trouble. And so there's a nonprofit, one of the groups he's working with, that tries to help these kids. But they need money for this problem. So he's going out to the community and raising money for them. You know, and he's doing it all himself. He's not making any money. And he invested his time and a few dollars to put up this website to raise the crowdfunding money. And he's doing it. And he's done it for other people too, locally. You know, and that's why it's an inspiring message. We all now have that power 
through using tools on the internet without any even computer expertise to do that. You know, and, and you could spread this around your community and outside the community to show the problems because in our heart we all want to help. But we don't know how or why or whatever and it's a, it's a great way to communicate this to other people and solve the problem so you now have the power <laughs> to solve problems in your community watch how he did it okay so you're costas delias <laughs> and a wonderful greek family living in tampa there but you started this wonderful crowdfunding site for all the nonprofits in tampa called cause for fund right so you took it upon yourself to said hey tampa needs <laughs> cause for funding all these nonprofits. yeah so how, how'd you start this thing or, or why did you start it well thanks for having me it's cause to fund cause to fund dot, okay good yeah. cause to fund.com and i started because i saw a need here locally working with charities on boards and committees uh -huh. when things took a downturn in the in the economy uh -huh. in the great recession that there was a gap that needed to be filled to get donations back to previous levels and it's not because people didn't want to donate it's because they were in survival mode and they had to they had to cut donations in order to keep their own bills paid wow so i decided let's see if we can leverage crowdfunding mm -hmm. and the internet to reach more people to give smaller amounts, but still reach the same levels that need to be there, and um, it just it made sense because wow. it was using the internet. Did it did it cost a lot of money to set up this platform that's going to raise money for all the nonprofits in Tampa? <laughs> well, you know there there was some some investing in the platform, uh -huh. but it, it wasn't a tremendous amount, and and I put the WordPress site together myself. Wow. So it was basically a personal blog uh -huh. that I turned into a donation capable site. So uh, there was time and effort and some money involved, but you know, not tremendous amounts. Well, that's amazing. So, uh, you know, a per I mean, and you're a real estate broker kind of guy, right? Is that your main business? So you're able to, Correct. as a side project, say, hey, I, <laughs> I'm going to be a superhero and save the community, right? <laughs> and you just do this <laughs> with one left hand on the back. That's amazing. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm a and you've had successful I'm a campaigns already. I'm sorry, what? Now, I'm a glutton for punishment when it comes to work. So, yeah, yeah I just well, decided to take terrific. on a really side I mean, project. To me, there's nothing better to do in life than try to solve problems. They're there anyway. Everybody wants to avoid problems, and that'd be the boring life. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, playing par golf. If you did that every day, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so even the struggle at something, that's what makes you grow. But now you have one, one of the campaigns is uh, this Crisis Center of Tampa Bay, right? And they're Correct. raising money now. They're hurting, and they're they're doing very good work. What kind of work do they or problems are they working on there in Tampa? Well, the project that we're focused on is for children's trauma counseling. This is for uh -huh. children in our community that have seen just violent acts and have to have therapy and counseling to to lead normal lives afterwards. Wow. The video that's on the site talks about two two young brothers that were in a convenience store just buying treats with their father and there was a murder in the convenience store when somebody came in, robbed it and shot the clerk. And those kids had issues at school, they were wetting their bed and wow. they needed therapy and they went to the crisis center and got it. And that's what this problem, yeah. this program goes after is, is helping kids in those situations and also other situations of abuse, neglect, abandonment. Um, the Crisis Center locally is a, is a great organization that also helps suicide prevention, mm. but this is a very focused program and campaign for children's trauma counseling. So this is within the cri uh, Crisis Center's handle, all kind of crisis. You're trying to raise money now, or they are, for just the children's program to help like these two boys that were affected by this crisis. And, exactly, and, and, and any other kids that fall into such situations. Yeah. It, the crowdfunding campaign, Cause to Fund, is aimed at very specific programs mm -hmm. that people want to fund within I nonprofits see. and charities. So not just help my charity, it's help this problem. You know, we got a problem in this community, so they identify and say, hey, we need help to, to solve this problem and, and, and make right. life around here a little better. Huh? 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But more importantly, man, you're providing the platform to do this. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, you know, this wouldn't be around and these people wouldn't be able to do it or know how to do it. And I think what's so special about this, you run something that's growing. Yeah. I mean, obviously this crowdfunding, I mean, nobody knew about it a year ago. And, and yeah. now crowdfunding, I mean, the artists down there, the crowdfunding gives out more money than National Endowment of the Arts for Humanities, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. The statistics behind it are just mind blowing. Yeah. So, you know, you, you know, and, and the, like real estate, you know, if you get in early, man, that's where <laughs> yeah. that's where things happen. If you buy it after it's a success, <laughs> you know, it's too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you're there not only for your, you know, uh, uh, yourself in a way, but it isn't. You're helping the community and getting your whole community in on the ground floor of this crowdfunding, you know, idea, which, uh, yeah, I think is going to be remarkable in so many ways. And that's why I, a young guy like you sees how to take that technology and solve old time problems in this community. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. Okay. No, I got I you. Say, got yeah, you back. You bet. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear me? I mean, I say that now you're taking, you know, uh, a new technology to save old time problems. Fro yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly what we're doing is we're trying to take current technology and solve existing problems yeah. and, and processes and, and, and leveraging the efficiencies that come with technology to amplify the message and reach a wider audience. Yeah, and, and so if people want to help you, it's really go to cause to fund.com, right? It's a dot com? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay and give or at least see the video. If you don't even have money to give, watch yeah. the video and see the good work that these people are doing, right? Yeah. So with the crisis center, it, it if you go to cause the fund .com, you will see if you scroll down the first box is crisis center Tampa Bay and the video is at that second link. So right. Well, great. Now I'm losing you. So I'm worried. <laughs> cause I, got, about I can see you. Oh, good. And, and, you know, it's just so great that people like you are, are, are solving communities and our commu problems in our community and, and, and doing with the new technology, because this is how we're going to survive in the world, I think, is use the new tools that are out there for us to make life easier for other people, too, not just ourselves. Yep, I agree with you 100 percent. That's um, that's why technology was created and we need to improve upon it and apply it to some existing uh, processes. Well, okay, so if people problems. out there want to know how to do their own cause the fund in their community, take a look at causethefund.com. And if people want to help <laughs> this great organization in Tampa, the Crisis Center of Tampa, uh, click on their video on causethefund.com, right? You got it. Thank you so much. Okay. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them if somebody emails me through the site. Great. Okay, well, thank you so much, Casas. Have fun in Tampa with all that beautiful weather. It's raining like hell up here. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'll enjoy the golf course for you. You take care. It's okay, nice meeting you. Thank you so much. Now, isn't that great? Well, I'm going to send him a super, <laughs> a superhero cape so he can walk around town <laughs> like that. I don't deserve it. I got to take this thing off. But you could be that way too. I mean, the tools are out there in our community now, right there on the internet. For you to be your own superhero, you know, and, and there's nobody else going to solve problems except you. If you see them, you know, and you expect somebody else to solve them, they'll never get done. <laughs> Everybody's tied up in their own life. So you see a problem, like, your responsibility is go out and solve it yourself. And you can. See, there's tools now right, <laughs> right here for you to do it. And you don't have to be a geek to do it. They made it real simple. I don't know if you've been following the news recently, but last week the biggest news out of Washington wasn't Obamacare or how somebody screwed up in the White House or something like that. No, it was what's happening at the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is the biggest thing that's happened since 1933. It's going to affect investors and small businesses. And when I mean investors, I don't mean a fat cat 
you know, who's investing on Wall Street, I'm talking about you with a hundred bucks of extra money in your pocket, can now be able to invest in the next Facebook or whatever. You don't have to belong to a country club anymore, you know, to get in on the inside deal, to get, you know, shares in a new hot little company like that. You know, you could just go on the web and find out. And see, that's because of what's called the Jobs Act. Last year it was passed in 19, uh, 2012 and now they're coming through the regulations because it's going to change Wall Street. It's going to change small business. See, it allows small investors like you and me to put up a couple hundred bucks in the hot new company of the future, you know, instead of putting it in uh, you know, Las Vegas or whatever. Also, it allows small businesses like you and me too maybe, you know, that instead of having to raise public money you know, uh, on the, to, to the public and get money to start a business idea, that costs nowadays hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. Now for next to nothing, you could go online and raise money from the public to invest in your business idea. Now how great is that? And it costs next to nothing to do that now because they changed the laws and they're coming through. It's not changed yet completely. It won't happen finally till about next year. So go and find out about it. Watch this stuff because it's going to change the way you're going to be, you know, be able to do something with your money that's better than giving it to some fat cat or whatever it is. Uh, and them, them have all the fun with your money and you have all the worry. Don't live like that. You take the, the fun and find those little gem of companies that are looking for money, you know, to, to start up. And it's called the Jobs Act. 2012 Jobs Act. Find out about that. You know, and it's job stands for Jumpstart R Business Startups. This is a way for new businesses to get that capital. See, the way we do it before, and we still do, is with venture capital money. These are the fat cats, you know. And these venture capitalists for people who got lucky in a business and wound up with a lot of money or, or married into it or, or, or born into it and they become instant experts on every business because they have money and they're not they don't know anything more than you and I do you know? but they have the money so you think they do and they think they do you know? and now you don't have to go through them you know, at starting next year, you'll be able to go to individuals. Hey, this is a good idea I have. You know, if I could collect, you know, 100 bucks a piece or 500 bucks a piece from enough of your man, we're, this is going to shake the world, you know. And you could go out and do that. See, there are rules against you doing that before. And now they're not, you know. And see, the new rules, uh, and they'll come out maybe probably, you know, in the middle of the next year sometime. Uh, and it'll be for... You know, you can invest up to $100,000 that way, just online. You go to a website and look at the companies or whatever. And, hey, that looks cool. I think so. And, you know, they vent them a little, you know, and kind of thing. So you're somewhat protected. And you can't put millions of dollars in this thing and you can't raise millions. You know, so it, there's limits on those kinds of things. But it's a wonderful opportunity for small businesses to start, for people to invest in small businesses. So see what happened now with the new, uh, the new laws will make it like every business can now get money and people can invest anywhere from a couple hundred bucks up to like a hundred thousand dollars. That's a limit depending on your income. How much income you have will depend on how much you could do that. But so you put in a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or something like that. I mean you're part of the next you know, generation of some Facebook or Twitter or something like that, or maybe a local business in your community that you want to see them grow. Uh, it, it, it's it's going to be taking the industry by storm to me. It's going to take the country by storm. It's going to take your, you know, explode us like nothing else. And see, the rules have been the same since 1933. They were worried about grandmother, you know, losing all their money by some huckster. I mean, that's still a potential, but yeah, you're going to lose a thousand bucks or two thousand dollars, if that. You know, uh, Las Vegas takes a lot more from people nowadays. You know, and I've seen, you know, again, Forbes are talking about this and venture capital, they're those fat cats who think they're smart investing in new companies. They only invest like $30 billion. They're saying that this new law is going to create 300 billion. I mean, they may or may not be right, but man, even they're half right. You know, that's still a gazillion times more than what's happening now. It's an important thing. Now we have a lot of videos of companies who are doing this already. They're already poised. 
uh, to help people, you know, either a business go online to get money, because now see they're doing it, but you have to be a registered investor. That means you have to make $200,000 or have a million dollars in assets. Well, most of us don't have that. So that's not like the 1% crowd. But next year, it's going to be the 0% crowd, you know, so that was the rest of the 99% could get on this stuff. But those websites now that only aim at registered investors, as a small business, you could go on these websites now and look for money from those uh, registered investors. So it's the same deal, but just for rich people. Next year, it's going to open up not only for rich people, for everybody else and go to uh, YouTube slash Matthew Lesko 70. Matthew Lesko 70. I just turned 70. <laughs> so YouTube sla dot com slash Matthew Lesko 70. That's my channel on, on YouTube and you'll see uh, videos of people get money from crowdfunding and, and also a lot of these uh, crowdfunding sites that are for investors and small businesses too. Or just get me on Facebook and tw Twitter uh, or lesco.com. It'll be help you to point you if you can't find these things. But remember, this is the hottest thing I think that this country's gonna have for jumpstarting us as a nation and getting your idea out there or getting you to invest in the next new big thing, no matter who you are. You don't have to be a fat cat with a cigar and having a membership at the country club. <laughs>